As someone who's uh, lost family members through suicide, to see a young man reclaim his status, it's, it's awesome for people like us. He's got targets of plenty. He wants Mad Jack. And he gets Mad Jack. Big moment here for Mad Jack and for North Melbourne and for AFL football. In his return game, struck it pretty well. It's an amazing story. It's a human triumph story. That's what it is. It's a great story, Mad Jack Door. And they come from everywhere. That's what footy clubs are about. An incredible personal journey back to the AFL. And isn't this a great scene? And the emotion says more than any words could possibly say. It's been two years um, since I played. And um, there's no better feeling than winning out of the past two years. The battles I've gone through, you know, it's worth it. Winning with your teammates. He's living proof that people can reclaim their loss. It will be the lasting image of 2020 and in a year where it's been so difficult for so many, it was good for the soul to experience a moment like that. And that was from the outside. Imagine having lived the journey of the past two years with him. Rhys Shaw, welcome to AFL 360. Thanks, Jude. And Leon Thanks, Cameron, the Giants Hello, coach with us tonight. Leon, great to have you back. G'day, Jared. Great to be here. What's a moment like that worth on the human side of things, Reese, for, for a footy club who've, who've watched a young man through his struggles and nursed him back? Yeah, it was, it was certainly a, a massive moment, um, even before the game, for, for him to reach um, the AFL again. Uh, I think it's, it's obviously bigger than, than, than football and... Um, the reaction of his teammates uh, when we told him was was fantastic uh, at training, and then you saw the, the genuine reaction of our boys um, uh, on on Saturday. So it was uh, really pleasing, and I'm I'm uh, I'm really thrilled for Madge and his family and um, the greater community because it sends a it sends a really great message uh, to everyone. On Saturday, I was part of the interview, Reese. First of all, congratulations, great win on the weekend. But Madge was the emotional story, as Jared said. You were part of the pre-match interview with Dermot. And I thought, I thought your response to Dermot was, was first class. Did you speak to Dermot again after that, as Dermot cried on TV about the loss of, in, in his family? Yeah, it was obviously a really emotional time for, um, for Dermot, um, having experienced that in, in, in his life. and. Um, I've uh, I got in touch with him uh, the next the next day and, and just sent him a, a message of, of um, thank you for sharing that um, with the world and yeah, and having the courage to show his emotion like that and having been involved in a um, similar situation with uh, my uncle um, it, it it certainly hits home with us all and um, to see Madge out there is just a, a fantastic thing for us all and um, I was really proud of. Yeah, football club over the last uh, two years in, in their support for Madge, but um, more importantly, Madge has shown great resilience and courage throughout this whole process, and I just love seeing him back out there on the weekend. So let's talk about midfields, Reese. Um, Dumont, Jed Anderson, um, you drop Polak, so you're putting it on a lot of you put it on Polak, and he's out, and you put it on a lot of your your midfield. Hall had a, had a far better game. I mean, how pleasing was that to see from your midfield group? Yeah, we were really pleased um, with the way the boys went about it on the weekend. Um, obviously, made some pretty tough tough calls during the week, uh, but uh, the guys uh, certainly went out there with a with a real sense of purpose, and um, those midfielders played their part really well. And Josh Simpkins had a sensational year this year, and and Jetta and uh, Froggy are going really well, and um, they're playing some really good footy. And, and Hawley um, is really. Uh, turning his form around and becoming a really valuable player for us. and So I'm really pleased with the way our midfield's functioning at the moment. Did you deliberately raise the stakes at Selection, Reese, and did you get the response you were looking for? Yeah, I think we're, we, we kind of had to, Jared. in terms of what well, we, we'd lost six games in a row and um, you, you just can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and, and, and look, expect a different result. And... Um, 
we we had to make some tough calls, but uh, we we made them, and um, I think the boys went out and, and played some really good footy. But um, we're under no illusions that we, we got two four day breaks coming up, and we're going to have to use our whole squad and um, the guys that were dropped, Jared and and um, Benny. Uh, they took it well, and um, they understand where they sit, and and they understand that they uh, they'll play a part soon, but. There's the certain requirements that, that I expect and, and our team expects, and um, hopefully they can come out and um, play the role soon. Real curious consequence of the weekend. You won really well. Your team kicked a lot of score. If Ben Brown played, would he have kicked goals? Or did you kick goals because Ben Brown wasn't there? It's, I don't know, the duck, what's the chicken same? The, the chicken or the egg, who knows? Where does Ben sit right now? Yeah, look, I, I think in, in Benny's case, he... he He's um he's been trying everything. Uh, it's, teams have been going really hard at him. Um, he's certainly got a few areas that he needs to improve on. But we we know what kind of a player Benny is and how valuable he is. Uh, and I'm really confident that he can get back to that form. But there's got to be a circuit breaker at some stage. And and we just pulled that rein. And I know that um, he's working hard and that he'll play a part um, in our team again.